Hello everyone. Welcome to my live stream. My name is Denise Mika Hutchins and I'm broadcasting to you from Studio Mika Arts. Our charity of the month is Farm Sanctuary and you can help me, help them, help the animals in a couple ways. One, surely this will be my last stream of the month so please watch and bring your friends because I'll be making a donation at the end of the month based on my unique viewers count. You can also donate to our epic fundraiser here on Twitch. I'm calling it epic because Bickman 2K and Exe the Artist both donated $10, which means we have doubled our goal for the month. So let's keep it going. If you can, please donate. You can also find a link to Farm Sanctuary if you want to find out more about them and donate directly to them through their website. That's on my about page on Twitch. It is Wednesday, so oddly it's a normal streaming day for me, but I'm supposed to be taking Thanksgiving break, so this is still a bonus stream. <laughs> it's, what, almost 20 minutes later than my normal start time, and I don't know how long it's going to last, because I want to finish this piece. Please, let me be able to finish it. I got some great ideas, though. I don't regret having time in between to think about what I want to do with this piece since yesterday because I had some great ideas, especially concerning the background because it was it was bugging me. I thought it would be a little easier <laughs> to resolve, but I have a great idea. So without further ado, let's get going. Today, unlike usual, also to make it a little more fun for me, I've got the Spotify cozy Christmas jazz playlist on my Bluetooth headphones right now. So <laughs> if you want to get in the same mood, you can just pop on that Spotify playlist, the official Spotify cozy Christmas jazz. I wanted a nice, relaxing, hopefully no lyrics. We'll find out. It's harder to find stuff with no lyrics. I do not want lyrics while I'm streaming. That would be way too distracting. But so far, so far, good with this. This is getting me in the holiday spirit with this image in front of me and the cozy Christmas sounds. This is my cozy Christmas koodlers, so cozy Christmas jazz goes. It's the perfect soundtrack for this image. Now, what I had thought to do to make the background how I was hoping. Well, actually, it's still different from what I originally hoped. But what I was hoping yesterday to achieve using the background that I currently apply, but it's just, it just, it's, there's too much black when I look at it. It's just too dark for the rest of the image. But then I thought, oh, I've already done so much cutting out anyway of these holly leaves and everything else so that I could get this background in digitally to save time though I don't think I'm actually ending up saving time after all because that's just always what happens to me. <laughs> I'm going to replicate these leaves and I think I'll just turn them or flip them around so and then make them faded more in the background, maybe below these background layers that have color, it's just something like that. So replicating the drawing I've already done to fill in the background a little more matchingly than what this background pattern, which is this one of the available Photoshop default patterns, better than what it's been able to do. But the first thing I need to do today is cut out this image better. I used the what did I use? Magic wand tool. Yes. And that did pretty well, but there's still all this extra stuff and it just looks so rough. I've erased a little bit here. So this is gonna take me a while, but when it comes to the decision between getting this done faster or getting it done to a level of craftsmanship that I'm satisfied with. The latter always takes precedence. 
So regardless of how long it's going to take, I'm going to do this because I won't be happy with this image if I don't. But I don't think it will take that much longer after that to finalize everything. So what I've done is move my mouse and keyboard over to my right. I have an L shape, two tables into an L, and so they're now on my right on the other part of the L. <laughs> And now I have my tablet, my walk home tablet down here in my lap. So I'm just gonna go through and erase these. I won't worry about erasing up here because that's going to be cut off anyway once I put it into the format for the greeting card that it will eventually become. But I'm just going to hand erase the rest of this now. I just don't want these white edges. It makes it stand out in not a great way. It's a distracting way. The only thing with listening to music myself while streaming is I, I might start singing. <laughs> I can carry a tune, but it can be odd because I'm hearing the whole song. And you know, when you hear a song and your favorite part happens, you just sing that one part. So I've been thinking about that. Been self-conscious, not in a embarrassed way, but just a I am conscious of the things I do and that it might be weird for other people kind of way. But I think there's worse things one could do in the world than sing part of a song that no one else is hearing. <laughs> I don't normally listen to music while streaming because it's hard to concentrate actually, but I've been feeling really antsy today because I've been saying all week, this is supposed to be my vacation week, and it hasn't worked out because I got started too late on this piece. It's really important to me to get it done. So today, it felt like it would be nice to have a little music to feel seasonal while live streaming. I'm zoomed in pretty close, 200%, but I still kind of feel like I want to zoom in even closer, but that'll take longer, so I just gotta be satisfied with this. Yesterday I tried putting a stroke on, but there's some areas where it's really light and the lines aren't completely connected just didn't work at all. It looked terrible in those areas. My fans on my PC are picking up. Oh, and let's remember to save whenever I can. Whenever I can remember, I'm going to click that button. I have a save button mapped on my tablet remote control. It's a remote so that you can unplug it and put it wherever is convenient to you. But I used my older walk home tablet for so long and it had built in shortcut keys on either side so that you could pitch, pick which side based on whether you're right or left handed, which one, which keys you want to be active. If you want them all active, you could have that. But I picked the opposite to my dominant hand, dominant for drawing. So I just ended up doing the same thing with the remote. I don't actually use it remotely. The remote sticks magnetically to either side of the tablet that I now have. I just put it right where I used to use it on the old one.
was considering taking next week off since this week didn't really end up being time off for me but I don't feel like I can because Twitch is having their charity fundraising event which I do all year round but they might show your stream if you're fundraising during the event and I think that would be lovely if my stream got featured so I don't want to miss out on that opportunity so thinking of maybe just doing another hybrid week off kind of like this where I cleared my schedule but I did stream and so next week I could clear my schedule except for my streaming time so at least I could get a little bit of free time to well, really what I want is free time to do nothing that really recharges me free time to just sit and read without any expectations about how much I read or what I read or Oh, Google says my husband's at the entryway doorbell. Sorry, husband, you're going to have to figure it out. <laughs> Hold on. I better check to see what that is. The Google doorbell thing often confuses people for other people. So it might have just been a delivery person. Let me just click on this real quick, though. Let me check make sure that... Something weird didn't happen. Alright, there's nobody there now, so maybe it was just a delivery. Odd. Oh yeah, I hear footsteps in the house. That's gotta be him uh, going down the stairs to check the front door. I don't see a package out front, though. Well, there's nobody there now, so I won't worry about it. Finally done with this little section. Let's move on over. Let's see. Down here. Get all this stuff. It'll be funny when the Google doorbell is rung and then tells me who's there and It'll say, like, I'm there. <laughs> wow, I'm at the front door. Obviously, I'm not. Or it'll say, like, say my one of my sisters is already over, then my other sister comes. And so it'll say that sister number one is at the door. Sister number one is in the house already. It tries, though. And I am glad that we have it. Oh, good. Oh. <laughs> good job, Sean. <laughs> also, thank you for redeeming puppy scritches. I set up the puppy cam so that you can actually see the puppy scritches. Okay, here they go. Start with Ipa. She's closest to me. You want Ipa? There's some scritches from Sean. Screeches on her head. Screeches on her head. She's curled up in a little ball. Snoozing. Okay. Chappy turn. Come on, Chappy. Want some screeches? I'll scritch her on her butt so that you can actually see that it's happening. She screeches for Chappy. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. He's her screeches. For you, from Shump. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, yes, good girl. Oh, yes, good girl. <laughs> Yay, fun! <laughs> Thank you for redeeming that. Puppy scritches. That was puppy scritches number four. This is going to be worth the effort. I 
I can't deny that I've been disappointed that I couldn't get this done faster. But I don't regret putting the effort that I have into it because I already really like what I've accomplished. So once I get all these fine details finished, I'll definitely be able to add it to my body of work with pride. Like I was saying yesterday, things are really rushed these days in the illustration industry. Who knows, maybe it's always been that way. But I've realized that I'm not interested in that, even if it means only ever existing on the fringes. I would rather create work that I love. Right there, I was able to just trim that line up. So it was coming to an X instead of a point, so I just shoop, trim that little extra bit. Oh, I gotta say, this is tiring though. I've only been at this for what, 15 minutes? 17 minutes? Well, probably 15 minutes after the intro. Streaming intro. My sees ramping up again. It's not like in the summer though. The ambient temperature is low enough that it doesn't too often go into hurricane mode. My fans, PC fans, desktop PC. I'm going to turn back on that stroke layer. At the end, because there's probably going to be a bunch of little pixels that I missed. Yeah, let's pull it down and finish these shapes.
there's not much to talk about right now. When I'm making a lot of active decisions. I can explain them and fill the air with some relevant words, but all I'm doing here is just racing the edges. There's nothing I have to think very hard about. And it's picking up again. Makes me think I should save just in case. I did. Ooh! It's hurricane mode! I was saying hurricane mode rarely happens. He wants to prove me wrong. decision I am having to make along the way is how much do I erase and how much do I just let be because some of the lines get pretty thin if I actually try to get all of the light areas out. Right, I'm going to go back here work on this a little bit more and that way I feel satisfied that this shape is done. This bunch of holly leaves. favorite Charlie Brown Christmas. Maybe it's this way for other people, but that's basically, basically what Snoopy and Charlie Brown is to me, is those two Christmas specials. <laughs> I've seen a bunch of the other ones. Probably my next favorite one is the Halloween one with the Great Pumpkin, but I just think of Snoopy and Charlie Brown at Christmas time.
I just hit my watch against my screen. That's what that loud tap noise was. Maybe I can take a break from this once I get the leaves all trimmed up and work on using them as background elements. That idea I had last night. PC fans picking up again. Every time it happens, I feel like, ooh, I better save. What if they're picking up because my computer's freaking out and it's not gonna, I'm like my Photoshop's gonna crash or something. <laughs> sense that the fans keep picking up because when I open my curtains to easily open one of them I have to go around behind my PC my desktop tower and it was pumping out pretty hot air out of the back fans which is kind of odd because I'd not I hadn't used it at all I hadn't used my PC today yet that point at all. today. The puppy camps are on. Yay! All the puppies are going to be like, what? Okay, here we go. Time for puppy scratches. Eva first. She's right next to me. We're going to get more puppy scratches on her head. <laughs> oh, yes. These are from Wolf. These are some scratches from Wolf. She did the big sigh. Jappy turn. More, more scratches for you. These ones are from Wolf. These ones are from Wolf. She's very sleepy looking. She says, huh? You need some? I'm too tired right now. <laughs> oh, it's so fun. Sleepy pup, so sweet. <laughs> Thank you for redeeming that. Thank you from the puppies. How are you, Wolf? Are you having a great day? Did you find your dream house yet? <laughs> are you looking forward to having tomorrow off, if you have tomorrow off? Congratulations on having your offer accepted. So now we got to start packing. Or are you already packed and ready to go? You're moving very far away. You don't have to say where you're moving. It's just the farther you move away, the more work it is. Oh, <laughs> 15 minutes. Okay. 
That's probably one of the least stressful moves. You can just start now as you as you pack your boxes. You can just carry them down. You pack one box, okay, you just carry it down. <laughs> I hope your new home is lovely. Tons of packing. Yep. There's still boxes I haven't unpacked from when we moved into this house. And we've been here for over five years. I don't even remember when we moved in. 2018? I can't remember. They're just sitting in the garage. <laughs> What's your favorite thing about this house that you made an offer on? Did, what was the key thing that made you say, yes, this is the one? Of course, if you don't want to share, you don't have to. I'm just curious. Backyard is great. That's nice. Ari's gonna love it, right? Yeah, we're gonna have to play with Arian. Ah, oh, nice and move in ready. Nice. Oh, that's gonna be so fun. I still think of the videos you've shared playing with Ari, so I can imagine how awesome it's gonna be. For both of you. Oh, congratulations! I don't know how long you've been hunting, but from the time I've been aware of it, it didn't seem to take too long. I think that's nice. After my experience, it took us like six months or something. Finally find a house. And it would have taken six months because the day we found this house was the day it was listed. And we actually, we weren't the only ones who thought it was the best. We actually had a little bidding war. Reese, hello, Tia! Sorry to use your real name. <laughs> I just see that and I know who you are. Tia, how are you? Thank you for joining me. Wow, I haven't seen you on Twitch in a while. Yay! So glad to have so many people joining me today. How are you? Are you getting ready to enjoy a day off tomorrow maybe? Hope you are. Hope you're getting some time off. You deserve some time off. up coming all the way down here. Well, whatever. May as well finish it off. <laughs> I was trying to just focus on those leaves up top, but I ended up just keep going all the way down, and here we are at the end of the stuff to clean up on the bottom of the right-hand side, so just keep going with it. I wonder, though, if it might be better if I turn this other background Oh, there's a ding-dong. 
don't know if y'all heard that, but now that Google thinks that I am at the entry of Wade Doorbell, is exactly what I told you about. Let's see. Oh, just another delivery person. There's a big old box there. Hopefully Shump will get it. Aw, oh, that's okay. I totally understand what it's like with a job that... Kinda. <laughs> I worked a job like that for a long time, so I totally understand. You gave your roommate your domino shift today so you can have a day off. So you're taking today off? Oh, more info is coming in. Two morning shifts is a Ah, oh, take care of yourself. Yeah, that is, that is too much. I used to work a job like that where I was in two different departments and they would schedule me, say, an eight hour shift overnight that ended at 8 a.m. And then they'd schedule me to come back in at noon for another eight hour shift in the other department. And it was like, I literally can't work like this. I can't. So anyway, <laughs> that's horrible. I hope that you find a more reasonable job. Oops, it did not want to keep scrolling. Uh, well, let's just go back up here. I knew it. I knew you deserve some time off. Today off, okay, good. Yeah, I hope that you can find a better, more reasonable job for Christmas. <laughs> the sooner the better. But maybe you could find some holiday seasonal job for now and then have a little extra time to find something else. Although I, I don't know what the job market is like, so that might be a little too risky. Because you've got your house to think of too. So we were talking earlier about Wolf's new, new house. And then a few streams ago, I was talking about how Quilt has just bought a new house. I think it's great having your own home, even if you have a mortgage, because I've lived in apartments and I would much rather have my own home and the responsibility that comes with that. But it does require you to be tied down in other ways. It's a little give and take for the arrangement. Originally scheduled for 4 p.m. Two people, right? Two people leaving. Oh, that's too bad. Oh. Yeah, I think whatever the time of day, if you can't have some consistency. So, for instance, at least if you work at night, if you always work at night and you know which nights you're going to be working, I think that's way better. Because some jobs, we really do need people who can be up at night and available, like emergency services and stuff, but so many employers seem to take advantage of that and take people who are working really tough shifts just because it's completely unnatural to stay awake all night. And it also doesn't work with society because society is a daytime society, so then with your doctor appointments or whatever other responsibilities it's hard to meet those and take care of yourself. But it seems like some employers, a lot of employers actually think, oh, this person is willing to go this far, so I'm gonna take them even farther. It's that saying, give them an inch and they'll take a mile. And it's too bad because I think that the people who work such tough shifts are the ones who should be given the most amount of consideration 
Oh well, fortunately can't really change it, but I hope that you can find a more considerate employer. And so that's gonna be better for your physical and mental health as well. Let's see, how long has it been? Hasn't even been quite 45 minutes. And I'm about halfway done erasing this. Cleaning up the edges. So as I thought, it is going to take a little while, but thanks to everybody in the chat. Time is actually flying, so Thanks for being here with me, everybody. It does feel a little different. Even though, right now, I am streaming at my normal streaming time. <laughs> it was supposed to be a day off for Thanksgiving break. But then, like I was saying at the beginning of the stream, I got my headphones on right now and listen to cozy Christmas jazz too so that makes it feel a little different I'm getting into the rhythm of erasing this too because things are just feeling easier. That was a little bit too deep of a cut there. save my fans on my tower picking up again always makes me suspicious Today, yesterday I almost said that I had this, but today I definitely do. A little bit of extra time at the end of my normal latest possible bonus stream time. So I can't remember if I got started about the same time today or later. But I can definitely stream later than I did yesterday, so 
really hope this will be enough time to finish this piece today. There's so little to do, but it's just this little detail stuff. So you can describe this in, in just a few words. Clean up the edges, but it takes way longer than way longer to do than to say. And I was really hoping to be able to get these printed so I could sell them at the Catalyst Art Shop, which is where I sell my postcards. They're having a Black Friday sale, but at this rate, I think I'm just gonna have to focus on selling at the Winter Vegan Market, which is coming up, I think the second weekend in December. I just didn't receive enough advance notice about the Black Friday market for me to really plan for it. I had been thinking, oh, that's okay because I'm going to get this done on Monday or maybe Tuesday and then I'll be able to apply and get all my goods ready to put into the market. But <laughs> my main thing that I want to make for this season is still not done and it's definitely top priority. So hopefully next year we'll get a little bit more advance notice. As for me with all the stuff I'm doing all the time, every day my schedule is packed. I need something like a month's notice to be able to prepare. Because there's one, the time to apply in the first place just to see if you can get in and be accepted as a vendor. Then you gotta figure out what you're gonna sell, you gotta create an inventory. For this, Winter Vegan Market is nice because I just take care of all my own stuff. I don't have to create an inventory, I can just do what I usually do, which is say print, postcard. I don't have a specific definition of what it is in my sales app. I just have a general description. But if I'm having someone else sell stuff, I need to know what's sold and what I need to make more of. So I don't think these coodlers they're probably not going to be for sale on Friday. But you never know. Maybe after I finish erasing this, what I need to do takes so little time that I have plenty of time after this to apply and prepare and all. This edge is pretty good already. I wonder if I already worked on it yesterday or if it just happened to be nicely trimmed.
Oops, that's a little too thin there. Ooh, he was snorting. <laughs> Usually that means she's having a dream. I'm glad it's about break time because my arm is getting tired from this erasing. Well, I'm really close to done though. I should just push through until I'm done because it's very, very, very close. Oops, that was a little too thin. that over here it's fairly well 
trimmed from the magic wand tool. Makes it go a little faster. Like this little bit of leaf sticking in from the edge. Oh, I cut that too thin. It's hard to see in the background. Yeah, almost done. Oops. <laughs> Too deep right there. All right, right here, I'm actually going to bring some back. So there's this little square. I'm going to use my, what is this called, clone stamp? I'm going to use a clone stamp to bring back a little bit of data. Oh, I don't want it to be soft, though. Oh, it's very large. Just to fill this in. I think that's good. All right, back to the eraser. Whoa, it's too much. Too much. Same thing here, but it's tough. Oh, I know what I can do. I think what I can do is select from this layer. I hope that's what I can do, <laughs> but draw on this layer. Oh. No, that's not really... Oh, it's because that one's not edited. Alright, that's not going to work. So I can do that, but it's not going to work. Problem solving time! Yeah, you just pull from up here. Let's try that. Clone stamp here, I'm already on.
went down to four. Bring it back up. Oh, so close. And then let's do a little bit from here. There, that's good enough. Trim it up. <gasps> I'm glad it's almost break time. My shoulders are starting to tense up. Just this little triangle here. And then this whole step is done. Hooray! I guess I was more than halfway done when I said I was halfway done at about the 45 minute mark. Because it's only been about 15 minutes more. Alright, I think that's it. <laughs> Let's double check. I don't think there's anything down here to clean up though. Let's zoom out. Do one more check. Let's see if there's some blatantly obvious spot that I missed. I don't think there is. Yay! So, let's take a break. Just a nice five minute break. Bringing my walk home tablet up and moving my keyboard back in front of me. It had been to my right. My desk map got moved. There. And my mouse too. Okay. I'm going to put on my Be Right Back sign, go get up, walk, stretch, rest my eyes. I highly recommend everyone else to do the same. I'll be back in about five minutes.
everyone welcome back I hope you had a great break I'm all stretched out and ready to continue work and super excited because the hard part is over now we get to do some more fun stuff well I guess there's a little bit more racing stuff to do because what I want to do Oh, I forgot. I wanted to turn the stroke back on. But what I want to do, I'm going to turn the stroke back on so that I can make sure there's not any stray pixels. And then after that, I'm going to replicate, just make a copy layer with just these holly leaves and use them as the background. I want to make this a wild color so we can check for any stray pixels. I forgot that I want to, whoa, I don't need to go that far. I'm going crazy there. <laughs> I didn't do too bad. Whoa, that's way too big. What is this? It's because I'm using my mouse now instead of the stylus. So I'm just looking for these little stray bits. I've got the stroke on there so that reveals those teeny tiny pixels that otherwise aren't really visible until some inopportune situation <laughs> where it's too late and you can't fix it. So that's why I do this. I can rest assured that there will be no awkward elements left over. Let's see. Yeah, I did better than I. Oh no, did better than I thought I would. Oh, that's erasing a lot. Well, I'll just leave that. Erasing a lot more than I expected. Oh, and look here, we have revealed some areas that need filled in. So we use Alt to select a nearby space and just click that. So this is indicating an empty pixel. Okay, back to eraser. Maybe we'll actually make it even smaller. <laughs> no. There. Yeah, not bad. Look at that really long line and then just a single missed one. Oop, one there. Wow, oh, I'm proud of myself. A lot of the times when I do this check, it's like, dang, look at all this speckles everywhere. Yeah, it's pretty clean about it this time. In the zone. You're racing the zone. Whee! So it's not just stray ones. Sometimes I see a little bump like this. That means there's some just barely Keep erasing a little too far. There. Bump. Oh, I see why it's doing it. Hold on. I think the stroke is still on the center. There we go. We want it on the outside. So that's why I keep erasing too far. This stroke is not where I'm used to it being when I do this technique. I might have. I've already looked over here. Actually looks really nice with this yellow on the outside. <laughs> okay. So now I'm done with that stroke effect. I am going to duplicate this layer. We And we don't need stroke on there. And to start, call this extra holly. Holly, Holly, and I want to delete anything that's not Holly, so I'm just gonna do a quick 
uh, is this a lasso tool? Yeah, quick lasso tool. I, I don't know. No, let's not use the ones in the front. I want the background ones. The front ones I specifically drew so that they stood out. We don't want the background ones to stand out, so we're going to use only these existing background ones and just replicate them and manipulate them. So this is just a really rough cut. Okay, delete that. Actually, I might need that stroke back. <laughs> I keep forgetting. Okay. Later style. We're going back in. Pulling the tablet down. Just some quick erasing here for this leftover stuff. I don't have to be too precise when erasing around the edge of the holly leaf. just need to make sure to get everything out that's not the holly leaf. Okay, I think that was everything on this side. I can see through this side too. I'm just going to use that stroke effect again to make sure that I didn't miss anything when I'm erasing this because I'm doing it so fast and it doesn't really matter. Even if I erase it slow, I still use that. Mmm. Looking up city jobs. What do you mean by city jobs? Like working for the government? what the pay grade listed actually means in numbers. That does sound confusing. Are there any jobs? It's oh, the birthday fur was on there. <laughs> At first I was like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, there it was. Your birthday fur it. I have all my chibi caricatures from the past, I think three years, in that carousel there. <laughs> Yay, I'm so glad you got to see it up there. Oh, yeah, look at this, I missed this big old line. Looking up jobs working for the city. Okay, gotcha. Maybe there's some cool one for you. Because city jobs should definitely have more reasonable hours, even if it's, well, I guess it depends how the city runs, but say it's a sort of maintenance type job like a trash truck or something, but even they get, they get all the holidays off. They don't work in the middle of the night. At least I don't think so. <laughs> ah, some require licenses and degrees. Well, makes sense. That feels like a good place to look, though. The... I guess I don't know anybody directly who's talked to me about that, but it always sounds like it's actually quite nice if you can get a government job. Just because of the regular hours. Okay, so I've got my extra holly here. I'm gonna actually put it underneath the main layer. And I don't want it to just be more of the same because this is this is too repetitive right here. It's really obvious. So the first thing I'm gonna try doing, see how it looks, is just uh, flip it. So let's see. 
I want to make sure I'm flipping just the layer and not the entire image. I think this will do it. Oh, and I can never remember what these mean. Oh, no, that's not what I wanted. Although that is kind of... That's kind of nice. <laughs> no, that's not what I want. <laughs> I want... So it's got to be flip horizontal. Oh, but I didn't undo what I did before. Okay, now let's do it. Flip horizontal. There. Now they're the opposite of how I drew them. I wonder if I should divide them up. I feel like that might be the way to go. So that I have three separate bits of holly to move around. This one's already separate, so let's just do that one to start. It's easy. Let's draw in between. Whee! And we'll control X and this will just control V. I don't need to worry about paste in place because it's going to be moved around who knows where anyway. We've got that one. Back down to extra holly. So right here, I wonder if maybe I should just erase this leaf and then I can have these two leaves be a solid edge and not have a weird leaf. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, let's just do that. Then again, if I do that, then I'll have to clean up two edges. If I do this one only, and just erase around here, that's only one edge. Oh, yeah, I guess I'll keep that leaf. So first thing I'm going to do just cut it out with the lasso tool. Zoom out a bit. I'm going to cut out this whole big leaf. Sprig. It's multiple leaves. <laughs> the sprig of holly. Whee! So we're going to edit, cut, and edit. Paste. Now we're finally on, I'm going to turn this off for now. This one, uh, I guess we could just see if it works without worrying about smoothing out this edge. So we'll go back to that holly that I just cut. And I just want to clean up this edge here. Where's my eraser? There it is. Whoa, it's very big. That's good. Pushing the tablet back up. So now it's just a monitor. And what I'm thinking is first let's pull this stroke effect onto this layer. Oh yeah, look at that. 
big bunches of missed spots. All right, but that's it because I just only erased that little tiny spot. So I guess I'll just put that effects layer in the trash. So uh, I'll name this extra middle Holly. This is extra left holly, and this is extra right holly. All right, I don't know if I can do this, but I was also going to make them smaller to show that they're farther in the background. So let's see if that works, making them all smaller at the same time. So I'm just trying to carefully place them underneath the stuff that I drew originally. To fill in the space Look nice. Though the ones with the berries are troublesome because maybe I'll do something like this. The berries I just want to keep in those corners. Something else I can do is transform it so that it rotates. I'm going to duplicate these all. So I'm going to use them again, but first I'm going to clean up what I've already placed. So for this one, I'm just going to keep this big leaf and erase the rest. And hopefully I can just do this easily with the mouse and be faster. Whoops. Oh, it's a weird angle. I did not mean to do that. How do I center it again? <laughs> what the heck? I've never messed around with that. Since it's a circle, it doesn't really matter. Here, I'll just click that and then reset it there. So I just wanted a bigger brush so I could do this faster. So 
the left one's all right. Okay, so we've got a copy of the middle holly. Oh, I remember. I want to make these smaller too. These get smaller as they go into the background. And I'm going to move them. one says middle it's the title is middle holly but let's see about putting it off to the side Oh, these are on top. I want these below those first three. This one feels a little repetitive, so I'm actually going to delete this one. I'm going to create another Do I want to? Maybe this is enough. Hmm. Well, let's just try. I was going to create another extra middle holly. Make it even smaller a little bit so it looks even different. Yeah, so we can just pop it in right here. Yeah, and I don't think I even need to erase anything. So maybe we can do something like that over here. I'm going to flip it back. make it even smaller so it looks even more different. Ooh, what if we have it coming out from Kumo instead of coming out from the side? Ooh, okay. So now I have this background. I feel like I should keep taking it farther because there's just these empty spots. But maybe I would be happier now that I've got all those other ones to add just a Christmassy, pretty. I was really liking paisley. I was really liking this paisley pattern. I 
if I make it darker. pretty bright. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Turn it up. Turn it up more. But I don't actually like it being too dark. When I look over here in the navigator and it's basically black for those little areas, it just seems like too much. It's too strong. It becomes its own character, those negative spaces. I wonder also if it would help. So right now I have a sort of green-blue gradient, but my shadows I created using a magenta burgundy-ish color. So maybe if I use that for my shadow color, that would help too. Oh, pink. <laughs> like a dark, what if I just pull this color? There we go, I pulled the actual color. It's like purple. Man, I like that purple color. Hmm, this is kind of nice. You will leave it like this for now. What I wanted to do was separate all these different layers of holly with an overlay so that it'll get stronger and stronger the farther back it goes. So I think this is the first one we've had. So we're going to add a new layer. I'll just put overlay. How do I want to do this? So, just like pull a color. And then we'll fill the layer in. And we'll make the opacity like 10%. So you can see it makes a little difference. It's over here next to Kumo. Makes a little bit of difference. But we're going to duplicate this for every layer so that the ones that are farthest in the back, or supposed to be, are the most covered. So I'm actually going to change it to the overlay blending mode. And we're just going to duplicate this and replace it. on top of each layer. I might have to turn up <laughs> turn up the opacity, but now we're just gonna start with 10% and see what that's like. I think this is how it was. The three extra hollies were all about the same level. And then we ended up with an even smaller one. And an even sm okay, that looks right. Right, so this is definitely not a big enough difference. It all looks like a bunch of the same holly everywhere and I want it to look like it's going into the background. So let's turn this up to 25% and see if that makes a bigger difference. It does affect it, but not as much as I hoped. Maybe the green needs to be darker. I'm just going to throw away this other background. And if we turn them all up to 25%, let's see what that 
looks like. Ooh, it's definitely taking these much darker. But I'm actually not a fan of how it's making this look because the yellow part just seems to be the same brightness as it ever was. So instead of overlay, maybe normal is actually... Yeah, see, with like multiply... No, color burn, that's what's doing that. Okay, multiply versus normal. It's almost the same. Let's just turn these all back to normal. Overlay is what I usually end up liking, but not in this case. There, that's getting closer to the effect I was trying to get. So it feels like these hollies are going back. Back in space. Okay, that's a bit much. Let's do 42. 50 was too much. I'm going to do 42. It's the answer. If you know what I'm talking about, you know. <laughs> How's that? Oh, yeah. It's the only thing with normal is it kind of makes it a bit dull. Let's cycle through and see. Whoa, I am on the wrong layer. <laughs> now, let's cycle through and see if there's anything that seems to do a better job. Whoa. Okay, yeah, lightning screen, those are not going to be what I want. Yeah, overlay makes it too vibrant. Mm. Linear light versus normal. Hmm. Wow, no. Q. All right, just keep it on normal. That's what looks best. Maybe I'll actually tone this down a little bit. We'll go to 30%. Maybe it needs to be more. Ugh! <laughs> Can't decide. I want these ones to continue to come forward. this pattern overlay on the background but actually I actually have a great idea I'm thinking of putting it on the entire thing once I've got it all settled so that everything has a nice pretty pattern on it and then maybe I can erase away in certain areas where we don't want the pattern to be distracting like on their faces turn down as it goes down so say so this is 50 so we'll do this one only 40 this one's only 30 and this one is only 20 I quite like it. I just kind of feel like now I want to add a few more leaves right here maybe and over, over here and this part too. So let's just copy some more and see what we can do with them. We'll put them down here.
Whoa, well, I didn't want to make it bigger. I wanted to rotate it. <laughs> Maybe if I flip it to Got middle holly, a left holly. Let's try to get another right holly. I feel a lot better about that. It's nice and filled. Oh, what's this one? I think I have a stray, a stray layer here that I didn't deal with. I have it. <laughs> I guess I'll put it over here. It's too big. Let's make it little. <laughs> there. Excellent. Let's save. I haven't saved in a while. Dang, we're already almost up to two hours total streamed. I'm totally into this. <laughs> I'm quite enjoying this. So I wanted to put all of this stuff into a folder just to keep it. Now that I'm happy with where it is, I don't want to see all those 15 layers or whatever it is. I'm just going to call this extra holly. And then keep it closed unless I need to get in there for something. So, 
Now with the idea I had, I'm going to put all of these into a folder themselves. Oh, I meant to, but I missed the button. Boop. And I'll call it complete. And I'm going to duplicate it. And this copy, we will merge so that it becomes a single layer. We can turn off the complete because we don't need that right now. Oh, though I did want to drag this pattern overlay. Wait, let's copy it because it's still on the background. You can't really see it. Okay, hold on. I gotta change, change what I was doing there. I forgot about this. So you can't really see it. But it is still there, so I wonder if there's something I can do to make it a little more... Oh, I can. Make it a little more visible. Then it fills in the rest of those spaces with something instead of just blank or a flat color. So it's a nice texture. And this is so much better. <laughs> this is what I was hoping that the texture would do. Adding a pattern on top of a digital background. Just filling in space, not becoming a character of its own. Uh, before it was just it was too obvious it was too in in your face now you can only really tell it's there if you're looking for it okay good I'm glad that editing it a little bit and of course when you print which I'm going to be printing these it's even less visible so I'm going to turn up the opacity a little more Somehow it feels darker over here than it does over here. But it's radial and it's centered, so it shouldn't be. Well, it's fine. We'll just leave it like this. Because this looks good. Let's save it again. Now I'm going to do what I said. Duplicate the complete folder and then merge the group. And we can turn this off. And now I'm going to add a layer. We're just going to see what this is like. Hmm. I think I'll start with a gradient. To reinforce. Oh, but I'll have to rasterize it. <laughs> These little final things I like to do require so much thought. Oh, what do I want to do for the gradient? Let's try this. Wah! <laughs> As if I need anything else stopping me from finishing this piece. Could not complete your request because of a program error. Learn how to fix. Oh, it opened a page in my browser. Make sure Photoshop is up to date. Well, it has to be. I always... That's Mac. Okay, I don't have to worry about that. I'm using Windows. Hide all layers in the Layers panel, then save again. Okay, I guess I'll try that. Okay, save it. And then see if that helps. Nope. I'll just click OK. The pages will roll back to the previous version of Photoshop. The heck? Okay, I'm going to save. And I'm going to just turn Photoshop off and turn it back on. That's weird. I have never seen that before. At least I don't remember. Okay, I'm going to let it sit for a second. 
Okay. Let's open it back up. See what we can do. Oh, I'm yawning. Goodness. It's because of this relaxing, cozy Christmas jazz. Matches my cozy Christmas coodlers. My tower fans are ramping up again. Oh, this looks so much better. This little thumbnail compared to what it was last when I saved yesterday. Okay. Wish me luck. Oh, did it not actually open? Open this one, please. Thank you. It's allowing it. Hooray! Must have just been out of memory or something. I don't know. Odd. But. I want this like in the middle. There. And it's radial. Let's just turn it way down. We just want it really super light. I mean, even 10% seems a bit much. We can also change That's kind of nice It's a little bit strong though What about reds? You have some reds? Ooh, might be too much But <laughs> No now it makes sense for them to have a green cast because they're surrounded by all this lovely holly. I can also change the blending mode right now. It's just on normal. Thinking, thinking hard. We're in the very last steps. See, I don't want to change it drastically. I just want a little subtle unification of the colors. I actually like it like this. It's just darken. Well, let's look at some of the others though. Darker color. There we go. I was like, oh, this one's nice. I look over. It's overlay. Overlay is very often what I choose. Let's compare it to darken. I was liking darken. Make sure it's actually going back and forth. It's not going back. It's changing layer visibility. I hate when it does that. It's not respecting my programmed in keyboard shortcuts. I want Control Z to be undo and Control Y to be redo. And that's what it used to be, but they changed it so it's some other thing that I don't use as a keyboard shortcut. I say some other thing. It's layer visibility. I don't want it to be that. I guess I could go in and make sure that it's actually changed because I am so often forced to reinstall Photoshop with no preferences, a, a clean reinstall. So it might have just been I have not updated my 
shortcuts. Can I search for the, nope, I can't blast it. So let's see, what it said was layer visibility. Wait, can I just do edit? Yeah, see, it has shift control Z. No, I don't like having multiple keystrokes there. I just want to, there. Accept and go to conflict and then accept because I, oh, proof colors is what it's changing. The heck, okay, well now it should be doing what I want so that I can check the difference between this is overlay then I'm going to put it on darken, which I also liked. So now the history has those two, and I can just do Control-Z, back to overlay, Control-Y, back to darken. Overlay, darken. Ooh, it's hard to choose. Overlay definitely gives a more green cast to everything. Darken preserves more of the original colors. So I think actually I'm just going to stop there. Stick with Darken. That's what I liked. Now the only thing is, do I want to bring that gradient in more? change it on here. I forgot about the new way that the gradient tool works. I have to change it here. I'm going to make this color a little darker. Hmm, doesn't really seem to make a difference. Maybe it won't make a difference until I click OK. I guess it's because it's only at five percent opacity. And I think what I found out is that you can't change opacity per color anymore, unfortunately. The old tool you could. Well I'll just leave it like this. So now I'm gonna copy this layer, turn off the original one in case I want to change it. This one I'm going to rasterize and apply a pattern overlay. So layer style. I'm still wondering if I want to just... Oh, I know what I'll do. Okay, never mind. I'm going to go back. I'm just going to make a new layer because what I want to do is be able to erase away on the faces. So I don't mind having the pattern say show up on the hat or on their body even, but I don't want it in their face. So this I'm just going to do fill. Pattern. I don't know if it has a if it has preview ye opacity 100 yet we're just gonna have to see what happens here we go oh yeah it's way too small <laughs> let's try it again now that I know it's gonna be super tiny so how do you change the size though can you not change the size I thought you could change the size you can only change the opacity what am I going to do? Script brick I don't think that's what I want. Maybe what I need to do is fill this layer. Just fill it with white. And then apply the layer style. Then I can change the size of the pattern and everything. 
See, this is more the size I wanted. This is the size that it was on the background, which I think it's fine if it's the same as background. So we're going to apply this. Maybe we could do opacity 100. But now, now we're going to rasterize. No, we want to make it do a smart object. Where's that? Convert to smart object, and then we're going to rasterize so that we can erase rasterize layer. So we're going to take this opacity down. Let's do 20%. See what that's like? Yeah, it's a little, it's a bit strong, but we're also going to change the blending mode. Yeah, turn it up, actually. So there, this is what I was thinking. Something like this, where the pattern's showing up, but we can erase so that it's not overtaking everything. So darken. Multiply is the best so far. Hello color burn, no, no, no. No. That makes it too bright. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, it's still too bright. This is actually kind of it feels like old timey Christmas <laughs> with the CU. Yeah. No. What was it I liked? Was it darken? Multiply. I think it was multiply. Changing the color of the layer itself, so right now it's just white with the grayscale pattern applied and it's sort of washing out the colors. leave it. This doesn't really seem to improve the situation. We'll just leave it. So what I want to do is just use a very soft eraser. Very big. And I think I shall use my stylus on the tablet instead of the mouse so it can be more precise and I want to make it smaller so I just want to focus on the overall effect hope that's hope that's working hope that erased something
And I love this because you can still see the pattern here on my hats. I kind of think it's a little strong on the berries, even though the berries are supposed to be background elements. Anyway, so I'm going to lighten it up there. Yay! Oh man, this is really coming together. So there was one little... Let's see, I guess I'll just do it on... Eh, I'll do it on a separate layer. We're going to call these eye highlights. What I noticed when I applied the ink to Sora's eyes especially, and you can see it right here. For some reason it's really... Get the eraser back to a normal... Normal size. It uh, became orange when I applied it on the ink. On the black ink, and I don't know why, but I'm just going to take a regular brush with white, pure white, and just draw it on top. And I think it did it a little bit on so, uh, um, Kumo's eyes too. There, that's better. Yep, it did it over here too. This is just bugging me. I feel much better having this filled in. So the shinies in the eyes are so small, but they're such an important part. People look straight at the eyes. It's our instinct as human beings to look in eyes. That's how we communicate. Our prime number one way of communicating is through eye contact and or lack of eye contact or the kind of it's like Anyway, <laughs> we do it with anything that looks like it has a face, which my pigeons do have faces, so I don't want, uh, I don't know, sort of jaundiced eye sparkles. <laughs> I want them to be white. So, oh my goodness, am I actually done with the illustration part? All I need to do is trim it to size. I'm going to create a separate file. So I want it to be 10 by 7. I'm going to print it on half fold greeting cards. And then for Patreon awards, it'll be on 4 by 6 art paper. Patreon postcards. I do have a prints tier on Patreon. No one has joined it yet. But if someone did, then they would get a full size print of this. So it would probably be eight and a half by 11. Oh, look, I named it a crazy thing. <laughs> Why is it in Japanese? Uh, eye highlights. Wasn't watching what I was typing. Okay, so let's save this and create a new file. And we want print. The width is going to be 10 inches. The height is going to be 7 inches, 300 pixels. Do I want 300 pixels per inch? Or do I want 600 like I scanned it? 300 is plenty for printing though. We'll do 600 for this. This can be the print version in case I make prints of this and not just greeting cards. RGB color. Yeah, we'll leave it in RBG for now. 8 bit. Background white. SRGB. No, we want Adobe RGB. Okay. So I'm going to create another folder and call it final. There's so many folders. 
folders within folders here. And then we're going to duplicate final, create it, merge it into a single layer. So this is final, final, final. We're going to drag this over here to the new document and center it. super excited. I feel like this looks really good. <laughs> Just looking at the edges to see if this is nice placement. I drew the lines up to the 10 by 7 measurement that I put on the physical drawing. Let's cut off a little bit right here. But, yep, we gotta scoot it over a bit. Look at this. All this stuff on the side. Just gonna use the arrow keys. Okay. So the left side is placed well, but let's see if that's a little too much for the right side. Sometimes that happens. Oh, not bad. Hooray! In fact, it seems like we could actually pull the right side out a bit more. Alright, top to bottom. The bottom looked good. Nothing sticking out there. Top. Just a little edge of cranberry right here. <laughs> but I think that's good because there's now a little edge of leaf right here. Showing that it's the end of the line. Instead of looking like it carries on beyond the frame. So let's save. Save it under visual art, artwork. We're going to name this, uh, no, 10 by 7. Okay. I was just thinking, does this make sense to future me? I think it does. This is 10 by 7, 10 by 7 version, so save. Here comes that point where I'm just going to save it in a bunch of different formats. Ah, uh, yes, so I'm actually going to open a folder of Windows so I can just drag the files in. So I'm going to go Products, Greeting Cards. So first I'm going to drag the summer griffin in here. I'm going to use this as a file template. I also want to drag in the postcard file. So that this can be November's Patreon rewards. And now I can close that folder and get OBS back up on my secondary screen. Alright, so first things first, we will save this file as something else, save as, so that we don't save over the Summer Griffin. So it is still 2024, this is the fourth greeting card I made this year, 
which is actually kind of crazy. But I did it. Wow. Anyway, <laughs> this is Cozy Christmas Coodlers. So just drag this layer over here. I'm going to transform because this one is at 300 DPI. Oh shoot, I can't do it this way because it retains all that information that it's outside. Hold on. I always forget I have to do this a different way. Oh, it won't go back anymore. Oh, it's stuck. Come on, Photoshop, you can do it. It's stuck. Come on, man. You can do it, man. What if I just throw that in the trash? <laughs> okay. So what I need to do is, actually, I can just Control A, copy, and then paste it. So that that way, it's just this square and not that extra data. There. So all we have to do is match it up. Actually, it's not snapping. Let's make sure it snaps. Need to snap to these edges. delete this summer griffin layer so this is now saved as a different file and on the inside actually spent a little time Monday I think I used to have two different files for the inside of the card and the outside of the card but I realized that there's no reason to have two different files so I combined them and actually it's much easier to edit so this is called Cozy Christmas Coolers. It still mixed media, which is great. Most of my stuff is mixed media, so I rarely have to change this part. The year is still correct. All of my contact information is correct. So now this is ready to be printed. And when I do print it, when I print the front, I just turn this layer on. And then when I print the inside, I turn it off. So that's ready. And now let's save this one. Oh no, 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 not save a copy. It has to be saved as. Otherwise you'll still be working in the previous file. Okay, so this is 11. Once again, cozy Christmas coolers. So we can delete the message for now. This is last month's message. We turn off the writing folder altogether, actually. Open the front. Drag this in. No, wait, don't drag. Copy and paste it in. Put it in that front file folder. And then delete that layer. Save it just because. And then transform. <laughs> I'm doing so many things. I'm gonna save. I'm gonna remember to save. So not only is this file 300 DPI instead of 600, it is 4 by 6 instead of 10 by 7. So as you can see, that's not quite the same ratio. So we're going to choose a placement that looks nice. pretty good. I should go back down a little bit. kind of like this though. Let's put it down just a little bit. 
tiny bit again. There. Enter. Although, it seemed like me. No, it's it's lined up. Okay, never mind. Alright, so the front is good. Let's change the back. It's the same thing. We've got to change the title. And in this case, the media is different too. I always want to make sure I spelled it right, especially with this really fancy font that I like to use. It can be easy to <laughs> miss a typo. So this is mixed media. Cozy Christmas Coolers Mixed Media. Save. Let's double check the card too, the greeting card too. Cozy Christmas Coolers Mixed Media. Okay. Hooray, they're both spelled correctly. There's one more thing I can do before I call this stream good because the next thing to do is just print these items and that's not really something I can show you, so that's kind of boring. <laughs> Plus I've been streaming for two and a half hours, so that's plenty of, plenty of stream time this time. Oh, I'm in the wrong menu. What I want to do is create the web version of this. And all I need to do for it, I think for this one I'll do my little watermark that goes along the bottom instead of my circle one. I have those two choices. I like to put my watermark on it so that if anybody is wondering, they see it online and they're wondering where did this come from, who made it. It's got my... At the very least, it has Studio Mikard's name on it. This longer one that I put along the bottom also has my web address and my real name, so people can even even more easily find me. I like these long ones put along the bottom of my illustrations. They always seem to go really well. to decide what color to use. So I don't want it to be too in your face. But I do want it to be easy to read. If someone's looking at <laughs> if you heard that that was Eva she be on. <laughs> Ooh, that actually looks pretty good. So what if I turn the stroke back on it? Mm. I'll make it bigger, like 10 pixels. Blah! Oh, it's because it's on center. <laughs> I want it on the outside. Outside, please. I like it to be round and roundy, roundy, roundy. Nice and soft. Looks pretty cute. So what if we make it a little bigger? 15. Not too much. Let's see about the watermark being at 50%. Now this is still just too much. We'll go back to 10.
That's cool looking, but it's hard to read. That's also cool looking, but it's hard to read. <laughs> Readability is important. Wondering if maybe I should start with a hundred opacity and then go through these. So it doesn't look too bad like that, but it's just too attention grabbing. What's this pin light? This is kind of nice. How's this different from normal? Oh, wow. That's really nice, actually. If I take opacity down to like 90% or 80%. It starts to get hard to see at that point. Back to 90. Yeah, let's keep that. That looks nice. It fits in the Christmas vibe too. Let's save. So now, let's see. First, I will turn this watermark off and save a version that I might use for. Well, you know what? I actually have several places that I want to upload finished work like this. My big illustrations. So, including Fine Art America and my art portfolio. So I'm going to look what sizes have I been making those images. Let's see, is it under web content? Trying to see my own organization. I have so many files related to my career. Um, nope, none of those. Oh, here's portfolio images. Okay, so it would go under color illustration. What sizes have I been making these? Come on, Windows, show me the size. There we go. 2,000. I've been making them 2,000 pixels on the longest side. So we're going to do that first. Image. Image size. <laughs> it's 6,000 pixels in the native size. Now we're going to bring it down to 2,000. Which still isn't small. This is 100%. Then we're going to save a copy. We do want Adobe RGB. We want to save it as a JPEG though. And put it in the, it was under web content, in the portfolio images color illustration folder. So we're just going to call this Cozy Christmas Coodlers Wix because Wix is where I host my portfolio, my online art portfolio. And save. Let's see how big that image is in megabytes. Oh, that's only 2.87. So Fine Art America is the other place I definitely want to put it without a watermark on it. But their thing is interesting because they just have a megabytes limit. It has to be less than 25 megabytes. So what I end up doing is making it a size because you can't use this. This says it's going to be 328 Okay, or the, here it says 32 megabytes, but then you actually save it and it's not that size on disk. I don't know why. I don't know enough about it <laughs> to know why it's different. But what I just do is save it, look at what it is on disk, save it again if it's still too big. So I'm going to save this as a JPEG. Oh, I didn't go to save as. I need to save a copy, I mean. I'm going to go to JPEG. 
Would it be under web content? Let's see. Zoom, Vegan Toastmaster, social media. SCBWI. Oh, that's another place that I do it. But I think I just copy. Well, hold on. Let's, let's focus on Fine Art America. I think maybe Fine Art America, I'm just saving it in my art folder. So let's do that. We're going to call this FAA for Fine Art America. It's uh, my print-on-demand site that I use. Now, I'm, uh, well, quick before I do that, I'm going to go back into so SCBWI profile illustrations. What size was I making those? Okay, I was just copying them from the portfolio images. So I will do that. Copy this file and then bring it over, put it into SCBWI. Paste. Excellent. Now I'm going into visual art folder, artwork folder, and just clicking on this. So yeah, I can make this way bigger. It's only 10.5 megabytes, even though it said it was going to be 30 megabytes. But I guess it's because it's 30 megabytes as the Photoshop file, not as the JPEG file. <laughs> so <laughs> oh man, so we're going to change the image size. We're gonna make it way bigger because the bigger and the image is that I can provide to Fine Art America, the better any prints will look that uh, are ordered. This is seventy-two. Let's try five thousand and see what that's like. This says 15.7, but this doesn't usually equate to what I end up seeing on Windows either, but we'll find out. So 15.7 megabytes, it says. Maybe that's just an estimate. Maybe that's why. All right, this one actually turned out 15.7, which means I can still make it bigger. I'm just going to try saving it at the native size. That would be awesome if this ends up being less than... 25 megabytes. Save. Yes. Yeah, it says it's going to be 23.1. Well, it's actually matching. Maybe Photoshop updated so that it works the way I want. <laughs> cool. Well, let me look in my folder and see if there's anything else that I save it as. I actually have a folder in my bookmarks that says upload new work here. So I've got DeviantArt in here, Wix, SCBWI, and Fine Art America. So DeviantArt is the last thing. So for DeviantArt, I save at 2,000 pixels on the longest side. So basically the same as my portfolio. But like I said, this is a really public high traffic site. So I put my watermark on it so that if it finds its way somewhere else that I don't necessarily intend it to go, hopefully it will still have this information so people can still find me. So I'm going to save this, save a copy, JPEG. My brain is almost fried. It's so hard to think. <laughs> so this one we will just call for web. So I don't just share it on DeviantArt, I share it on my social media and, you know, if somebody wants to see a copy or something, I'll send it an email or something like that. So, so we're basically just sharing around on the web. There. Wow. I'm just opening the JPEG. So this is the Fine Art America one. This is a full size. This is 47%. So if anybody orders a print from Fine Art America featuring this work, you're going to get the best possible version because usually I have to size it down a fair amount. And then here is 
the wet ver version. Okay. Hooray! All right, I think I'm done streaming. This is a bonus stream, so I'm not trying to meet any time or... I don't know what else I would be trying to meet, but I've done the thing. I'm stretching. <laughs> I've done the thing that I set out to do, which is finish this piece. I wanted to finish it last week, but that was completely wishful thinking. There's no way that was going to happen because I have now spent nearly eight hours this week on it after spending eight hours the previous two weeks. So at last, hooray, I am done. Then I got to print these as Patreon rewards and greeting cards. But I'm going to save that for Friday because there's no, it's too late today for mail pickup and there's no mail tomorrow. So I'm going to save that for Friday. Aw, thank you, Tia. Thank you so much for coming. It was so great to see you in the chat. It's been so long. I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving tomorrow. I'm excited because our feast, we got a catering feast and uh, Shump is off getting the rest of it now. So... I'm so excited to feast tomorrow, so I hope you have a great Thanksgiving. Um, yep, yeah, that's it for me today. I am not going to raid because I am super tired after streaming so much. I mean, I haven't been raiding recently because I haven't had too many viewers, so it feels kind of sad to raid with, like, just me. <laughs> ah, you'll have to see for yourself. Okay. I hope it's good. Hope it's good for you. And I hope you're able to find a more considerate workplace for you. You deserve to be uh, treated with a little bit more care, I think. <laughs> so, All right. That's all for this week. I will be back next week because it's the start of the Twitch Together for Good promotion. So charity streaming, which I do all the time. But I'm super excited to join with the whole Twitch community. So I will see you next Wednesday, I hope. I hope everybody in America has a great Thanksgiving and everybody else enjoys a wonderful week and weekend. That's all for me. Thank you for watching.